Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like at a clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and this is my bro, B. Boric, and we are B. Pal. I'm going to change that every time I do it. <laughs> B. Pal picks. Um, kind of had a, went, went into a little bit of a slide. You, I guess we can't hit at 80% all season long. I guess that's not possible. Um, we're going to continue trying, though. But we're back. We're, we're coming right back out here with these picks today. I'll tell you that right now. Yesterday, where were we? What, a foot maybe away from our over with the Giants? My gosh, that was – I thought for sure they were going to get the, – we, they had two, we had two innings to get one more run, low to the bases, and I just missed a home run by about a foot, right? Yeah, the guy, the guy just missed it. Yeah. But it happens. I think that's what's kind of been happening a lot the last little while. I'd liked our I would have picked our picks all day, but sometimes they just one little thing here, one little thing there, and things don't work out. But that we're no big deal. Over the long haul, we're always going to be up, and that's just the way it is. So we're gonna go for our picks today. Uh what is it? Two twenty September twenty second today? Yeah, something third, like that. Third. Oh, September twenty third. Okay. September twenty third picks. Some of these picks were, were we have for our Patreon members, so they're paying customers. Uh, we won't be giving you the uh, um, certain aspects of the game, but we'll talk about all the games. We'll talk about what we think is going to happen in all the games and uh, definitely give some good leans and some free picks. So let's start off with the uh, Dodgers and Padres at uh, 4.10 p.m. Eastern time. Dodgers, you mean the Angels and Padres? Sorry, I meant to say Angels. Angels and Padres. Okay. Um, well, we put... Well, we can't really talk about that game because we put... No, well, we want to talk total. about a total. Is there a total in there? Um, it's, it's at nine. Sorry, we, uh, have a, we have a pick in for our patrons. On I this wouldn't one. touch the total because Clevenger's pitching... And Berea is a pretty solid young kid that seems to be really starting to establish himself a bit. So that's probably not a good total to want to bank on, uh, unless if you want to bank on the under. But the Padres are a great hitting team, so you never know. Even though the young kid's pitching really good, that's a team he certainly could struggle against. Yeah, I kind of lean the under there. I would lean the under there. It's It's not a pick, but... Um, I'm leaning under, so if you have a feel for that one and you want to go under, oh, well, you can say that I was leaning that, and we were leaning that. Next game, Philadelphia Phillies. You're Philadelphia Phillies, my friend, <laughs> and the Washington Nationals, which, my gosh, the Phillies lost two in a row, is it, against the Nationals are so far this series? Um, yeah, they lost, I believe it's three... Okay, yeah, I was trying. Uh, yeah, because of the double nice. header, and then we played the other game. Yeah, um, <laughs> but um, these two pitchers, Eflin, if he can control the zone like he has in some of his starts, he's a pretty good pitcher. But Fetty also started to figure it out to at least be considered a potentially a fifth starter on a staff, most likely that can get you some innings and pitch pretty consistent for you down in the bottom of your staff. So. Um, this is a game, it's kind of hard to pick sides because the Nationals are trying to play spoilers and they've been doing a, a really good job in the Phillies. Eflin's pitched pretty well recently, but the Nationals have started to figure out getting their hitting going a little bit to round out this season. So that's a tough one to pick on. And then on the over, uh, what's the over over under on that one? Oh, sorry. I believe it was nine. I switched over to another uh, I, nine. I nine. would lean over, um, but it's a little risky because Eflin and Fetty also have games that they both only give up three and then or two each, and then you have four runs there or six runs, and then you would need um, the bullpens to do bad, which they're capable of doing, but if they only give up three each, they'll probably go fairly deep into the game, too. So, yeah, um, 
there, there, there are two teams that when they start hitting in a game, they generally don't stop. So if I had to lean something, it would be an over as well. Uh, one of those guys has an off day, which they're known to do. I'd say the percentage of it being over is, about, you know, 60%, something like that. It's not a bad play. Um, so next game we have uh, Cleveland Indians versus the White Sox. Pretty interesting pitching matchup here, although you, with Bieber in, uh, it definitely uh, puts the lean towards the Indians, I would say, would you say? Yeah, I would lean Indians. Giolito is a hell of a pitcher, though, too, and he uh, obviously threw a no-hitter this year. He'll pitch up to uh, Bieber, I think, but the Indians also have been the one of the best teams in the league um, rounding out this season, and they're going to keep continuing, it seems, to cruise, uh, they're on a. They went uh, five and five in the last ten, but then they're now back on a three-game winning streak, and then tied with Minnesota in their division, who's also on a three-game winning streak that both clinched the playoff spots along with the Shy Sox. So these teams, um, Minnesota, in instance, is playing for seeding. Uh, Cleveland's going to need to do a lot to win the division, but um, th- they're still trying to uh, mess up team they're playing a little bit and maybe knock them down to second place potentially. So uh, I would definitely lean towards Cleveland. Yeah, and uh, seven is a pretty low number, but even at that, I think I probably might consider the under seven there, but uh, it was a little higher. Seven is uh, is pretty tough for those two teams, eh? Yeah, that's, that's a tough one, yeah. Okay. Uh, Arizona Diamondbacks, Texas Rangers, uh, Benjamin and Young going to the mound. Uh, what a, a nine and a half on the total. Diamondbacks not getting very good juice here. What do you think on this game? Um, I mean, these two teams are pretty hard to peg. Uh, you got two lefties uh that haven't i mean benjamin's only pitched a few games uh as a ladder round pick he hasn't completely hit his niche yet um and then young uh has had a little bit of an off season unfortunately so picking between these two teams is uh not really the wisest uh thing to do because uh they're not consistent uh, at all. Uh, so I would just probably fade that one. That is uh, a game that some of the players on these two teams are fun and interesting players like Marte, Walker, um, Ahmed, and then the Rangers. They got uh, Gallo, Odor, and all those dudes. Um, so that's the MLB free game of the day on MLB TV that people can watch at six ten Eastern. So, yeah. other, than, other than that, maybe you can live bet it if you're watching the free game of the day. Yeah, and uh, yeah, very very inconsistent teams. I mean, I suppose take take whatever team's giving you the juice just because it could go either way. That might be my play there, but um, besides that. I don't really like that game at all. Uh, Yankees versus my Blue Jays. And uh, we don't have anything on this, do we? No. Uh, Okay. So uh, maybe we should. Tanaka is going to be pitching for the Yankees. Uh, I would definitely lean towards them for that reason. Right. And uh, also for the reason where Robbie Ray has not been a pillar of consistency for the Blue Jays uh, as well. Um, I may look at an RL there, really, um, especially the way the Jays' confidence has been waning. The last, uh, what, five or six games, they, it seems that they are not on the confidence side of the, the ledger by a long shot. So um, Astros and Seattle Mariners. Um. I would definitely lean uh, Strohs because Morgan Vincus is still trying to figure out the league. Uh, Granke's obviously a very good pitcher that has the potential to be in the Hall of Fame. So 
Yeah, I would definitely lean to the Astros. <laughs> You're getting no juice, probably RL at. Uh, I think that's not a bad RL play there. Um, the thing is with the Astros, um, they seem to be coming around a little bit now, but after they, they, they're a little disheveled after all of the uh, history we are aware of what's happened there. And I haven't really liked betting them at all this year, and it's shown to be a good thing to do because they have been fairly inconsistent. Uh, Milwaukee Brewers and Cincinnati Reds. Uh, total is eight and a half. Uh, what are we going there, bud? Hauser in for? You could lean the over, but that would have to be because of the Reds hitting, because Trevor Bauer's not going to give up much, I don't think. So, um, the only reason Trevor Bauer's four and four is because the team can't freaking score any pitches half the time. Dude, is a 180 ERA, you have no business being 4-4 four and four with a 180 ERA. So, um, yeah, I would definitely lean the Reds there and also lean the over, but only slightly because Bauer's not going to give up much. Hauser would have to give up the five that his ERA shows he's capable of giving up uh, since he's still trying to uh, t- find tool himself for being a guy that seems to have been figured out a little bit, so now he has to adjust to hitters figuring him out, which will be interesting to see next year, it seems. Or maybe sometimes guys tone it on if they make it into the postseason. We'll see what happens there as well. Yes. And for our next game, we have a play, so we can't, we're not going to give this out to our uh, – give the side out. Um, kind of an interesting play on the over-under on Chicago Cubs and Pittsburgh Pirates. Pirates just can't hit at all. It's gotten worse as the season That's has gone on. That's why I probably uh, wouldn't uh, bet an over because the Pirates can't hit and by some odd chance. Because um, Williams is a weird – like I'm surprised how much he's struggling because he's normally a pretty solid pitcher. Granted, he uh, pitched pretty good his last two outings against Kansas City and St. Louis. So if he only gives up the three or zero he gave up against St. Louis, well, I don't think – the uh, the Cubs might score four maybe off of their pen, but I don't think the Pirates are going to also score four. So I feel like uh, that's a tough one to even do the over because of how Williams just looked like he's got it a little bit. His plane on throwing back and seems to be getting his confidence back a little bit going up against Hendricks, who's one of the best pitchers in the NL. So Right. Um, yeah, I, I would lean the under there if I was going to go any. I've been burnt by picking Pittsburgh over too many times this year. <laughs> they, um, with much worse pitching matchups, and they still can't just hit anything. So uh, definitely would lean the under there. Miami Marlins and Atlanta Braves. Uh, this is a hell of a pitching matchup. Uh, yes, Absolutely. This is a game that whoever has the ability to do so should 100% watch this game. You have two of the young guys that might be reigning uh, Cy Young contenders for years to come and Max Freed for Atlanta and Sikto Sanchez uh, for the Marlins. Um, I would definitely lean the under in this one. And um, towards a side, who the heck knows? Because we have two of the best young pitchers pitching in this one. Yeah, again, the side here to me is like take the juice and hope that the juice comes in. Um, I'm, you know what? We might be giving a free pick because now that I'm looking at it, I'm seriously considering throwing that in up there for our patrons too. I don't know why we didn't already do it. Uh, did you have a reason why you were kind of afraid of that? It's just simply because Atlanta and Miami both can hit pretty good. Yeah, they both can hit pretty good, and. Um... The first bump in the road for Sikto was um, his last outing against Washington. And Atlanta's obviously a better hitting team than Washington. So that was also what my line of thinking was. So I didn't want to guarantee that it could be an under. Basically, like, say that, oh, I 100% think this has a chance to be an under. Because I don't know if that's the case. Uh, If Sikto... um, leaves a couple over like he did last game, then that would uh, affect that outcome. Right. Okay, we got Tampa Bay Rays and New York Mets. Uh, not the greatest pitching matchup here. 
<laughs> Watcha has been struggling pretty hard. Glass now. I mean, has it? Glassnail could actually even be better too. What are you looking at on this one, bud? If to, if anything at all, Glassnail's still been pretty um, solid. He just hasn't been as good as usual, but he has a very low whip, um, and his strikeout numbers are still ridiculous. So I think he's a guy. Being a guy that I think will turn it on in the postseason, he's definitely one of them. Um, I think uh, I would lean the Rays here, but the Rays also are playing for the playoffs. Um, so they're not going to overexpose guys at this point in time. So um, that's why the Mets uh, might be able to beat them. But I would still lean the Rays uh, in part because of the pitching matchup and also because they have a lot of depth. So even putting in guys off of their bench, they have a darn good bench. So. Yeah, I I'm, I think I'm a little more bullish on the Rays than you are here. I think the Rays are going to win that fairly handily. I'm just not a fan of watching so, uh, Baltimore Orioles versus Boston Red Sox. Did we do that one already, or is this the second of a doubleheader? Uh, well, no. we put in a uh, pick for this one, though. Oh, that's what it was. We put a pick mm-hmm. for this one already. We put it on the side. And uh, not big on picking on the total here. Maybe no. just fade that completely early. I don't even really want to talk about that. Uh, and we have one in this. Uh, I put one in for this one as well. So, uh, tires versus Minnesota. Again, uh, not so sure about the total here. Actually, maybe over, but Detroit's having a hard time hitting. Yeah. Yeah, I would um, I would probably fold that one too. Right. So that's our full that's our full forty two for baseball. We'll do a quick one on Dallas. Did uh, we do Royals and Cardinals game? Oh, Royals Cardinals. Did I miss one? Sorry about that. Sometimes this is why I don't like using this site. Anyways, go at her. Royals and Cardinals. I don't know why I, it's not here. It's that has Martinez and Duffy, so that one right. definitely has a chance to be an over um, in terms of side because they're playing for the playoffs and they've been looking solid. I would lean to the Cardinals still because they can out hit the Royals. Right. And I like the Cardinals there as well. Not getting much juice, but throw it in a parlay. Uh, so anyways, Dallas Tampa Bay, the hockey game tonight. We kind of we kind of not too often this happens, but we have maybe a little bit of a disagreement, but I'm going to lean with your pick here. What do you got Dallas and Tampa? I think it'll be Dallas just because I think Tampa might have figured them out, but I think we saw Rick Bonus like we said in some of our videos has shown the ability to not panic anymore and just kind of coach things and use the smarts he had from being in the league for so long to his advantage and not overthink things, where I think Dallas is going to counteract what Tampa did last game and play a much better defensive game this game in front of still most likely Hudobin, I would think. Um, And um, that will help them out to win this game. And then... Tampa will likely win the next game uh, because I think this is going to go back and forth pretty much um, and has a chance to, like Steele said, potentially go to seven on like six, like we both said. Yeah. Um, I just I just think that Tampa figured out Dallas pretty good. I, I'm I'm kind of fady on this game actually. If you if you had tied me down, I'd take Tampa. Um, but I don't mind Dallas with the juice in this spot. That's put it that way. Um, I don't mind Dallas with the juice. They have shown, uh, obviously, the ability to have a lot of pushback every uh, through the series. They've they've had a have an ability to get outplayed and win, which is some sort of freakish ability that I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I don't exactly know how that works, but it does seem to work for Dallas to do that. Mostly to do with the fact that Hudobin has been such a beast. So um, I have a feeling that Tampa might have figured Hudobin out, and this would kind of be my game to see if that's the case. Um, I think they're pushing him side to side as much as they possibly can, not so much back to the center of the ice like all the other teams were doing and shooting right into their defensemen. Um, I think what they were trying to do with that was break all their ankles until they're not there anymore. Maybe that was what they were trying to do. But uh, um, we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. 
So that's our full 42%, boys and girls. That's all we have to give. Um, I hope this helps you out with your picks. Uh, we've really, we really enjoy doing it. Um, we're we're going to back on the winning trail again uh, for sure, no doubt about it. I'm really, I really like these picks today. This has been Joe Boric, and Joe Boric is a, a writer for uh, a writer and a podcaster for other things as well. What do you do there, Joe? Um. I'm on Overtime Heroics and uh, Pub Sports. I do stuff for as well as Flyers Nitty Gritty, of course. Um, and um, all Not all that information, but some of that information you can find at SteelFlyers.com. Check that out. It's amazing. Yes, SteelFlyers.com is going to be absolutely incredible. It's already cool as it is. Go check it out. Uh, we'll keep you updated on that fantastic website. I can't wait till it starts. Um, so that's our full 42 boys and girls. Thank you for coming and enjoying this fine programming. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.